Hi, welcome to this part, AWS Certified Data Analytics Part 1. In this part, we will look at questions related to these topics, okay? Now, this certification is a very important certification. If you complete this, the respect in your organization will grow multifold. This is a complex certification, but as you know, on this channel, nothing is complex. So just browse my videos, understand the concepts, and you would be fine. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button. Let's look at the questions. So see, the story is very simple, extremely simple. You have a database which is Redshift and people are trying to fire queries of the Redshift. And what is the pain point? The queries are becoming slow and there are long running queries in the queue. Now, what should we do out of these options? So what should we do? If we want to address this situation, what should we do? So let me introduce you to the concept of workload management. This is a concept which is very important to manage priorities, like what to do first, what to do next. For example, between buying a car and buying a house, if you have to set a priority, house should be your first priority, car should be your next priority. But if you are in the United States where buying a car is the first priority, then you have to do that. But if you are in countries like India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, all those developing countries, then you can buy home first, car would be the next priority. Similar to that, here we can prioritize things and you can. Uh, so it will give short running queries, more priority than long running queries. For example, you are in a queue in Spencer's and one guy comes with one item and you have bought around 20 items. So what you do is you allow that guy to come first because he, why would he wait for so long? He just has one, one item. Okay, so that that is how WLM will also work. And hence this should be the answer. But let's look at other options creating partitions. The so option A, it's talking about creating partitions. When I see partitions, I'm just seeing like how Redshift Spectrum external tables can be partitioned. I am not able to see any other partitions. It is used to majorly restrict the amount of data that Spectrum can scan through. Now, what is Redshift Spectrum? See, if you have uh, a big database and now you decide that, okay, there are some more uh, files coming in from the sales department and you want to merge it. There are two options. Either you load that data in Redshift Spectrum through an ETL process or you can create external tables. The data will be still in the files, but you can directly query the tables. Uh, it will be appearing as tables here and the files will be queried. That way you are eliminating the process of ETL for any small, small changes. Partition will not help you in this case, so I am marking it cross now let's look at sqs see what is a service priority uh, like sqs what it is used for see it is a messaging queue service what happens is the queues uh, the messages will be in the queues for microservices and etc or serverless applications see sometimes what happens is the, there are two suppose there are three elements in microservice and then uh, you have a front end you have a middle component where the transformation happens and then you have a back end now always what happens is when you are suppose buying something in amazon it doesn't actually mean that your the purchase has actually hit the database it may be in between in the queue and you, uh, it gave you a confirmation that the purchase has happened but the in the background after maybe uh, 10 or 15 seconds or one minute that update will happen to the database also through this queue see to, for running the queries no we do not use queues you see here what you are saying is you put the queries in the queues that is wrong uh, you can only put messages and data in the queue not the queries the last option is vacuum command what is the purpose of vacuum command see it it will resort the rows and reclaim the space for example you uh, did a lot of truncate and delete now that space is still being utilized you want to release that space you fire a vacuum and it will release that space do we have any such sort requirement here no the question is not talking about any such things does the question say that we have to free up some space no so d is wrong okay now we have arrived at our answer so option b is the right answer wlm now let us look at the other question See, a corporation is already having EMR clusters and, and there is a requirement to install the libraries, third party libraries on these clusters. So currently corporation is doing it manually. But what they are saying is, boss, eliminate the human procedure, make it automated. Give me an automated solution. That is a requirement. Simple. The, you got the story. Now you have to select two answers. Okay. So the first option here, the, it says that you will place the required installation scripts in S3 buckets and you will execute them using custom bootstrap this is this is correct this is the process one of the process to do it we have to select two answers so this is one of the process to do it and second one says that you place uh, the scripts in s3 and execute them through apache spark and any ever so this would be very costly if you do that uh, through apache park and spark and etc so i'll mark this as wrong option b is wrong 
C says you install the third party libraries in existing master node. In existing master node, create an EMI out of the master node and use that custom EMI to recreate EMR cluster. Mm, let us think about it. So, according to me, this is a costly option compared to option E. If I see the option E compared to that, it is a costly option. So, I'll currently park it off. I'll mark it as no. D says use Amazon DB table to store the list of required applications, trigger Lambda function using DynamoDB streams to install the software. This is a wrong way of doing it. Where do you want to install? And you want a EMR capability. No, so where is EMR here? There is no EMR here. No? So, so D is totally wrong. Okay. And let's not waste our time on D. E. E says you will create a EC2 instance, you will launch it on Linux and install the third party instances and create an EMI. This is a standard AMI creation process. So AMI will also include Elastic Block Store, okay? Obviously, because uh, EC2 instance under that there is a EBS under the hood, so EBS will also be there. And then you use this AMI to create the EMR cluster. This this is correct. So uh, this is a less cost-effective option, and it will be totally helping you with automation. Okay, so we will go ahead with these two answers. So these are my final answers. Let's check question number three. See, there is a business, they have a Redshift cluster. Obviously, there must be some data being stored and that data is encrypted in Redshift cluster. Now, those guys have enabled audit logs. See, any database will have an audit log. Why we have audit logs? To understand the activities, who did what, who fired insert, who fired update, who fired delete, who fired truncate, etc. So, that is the purpose to understand if there is a hack and some bad players have accessed something, at least through the audit logs, you can come to know what data has been compromised. So, the corporation wants that the audit logs are also encrypted because if there is something, uh, a hack happens, then the audit log will also be readable. So, they, th they say that, hey, you know what, my data is encrypted, why don't you keep my dead edit log also encrypted? So, the logs are kept for one year, the auditor conducts monthly audit of the logs, okay, this information we have, which is the most cost effective option. Huh? See, uh, A and D look similar, but so we will park this. It, it seems A and D, there can be answer. One of these can be the answer. Let's look at option B. Option B says you disable the encryption, okay? So, and after that disabling, you, you configure audit logging, okay? And then you encrypt the Redshift cluster. So, it's a disabling the encryption will not help you because, see, the data is already encrypted. Now, if you disable the encryption, the data will still be encrypted. It will not become unencrypted, okay? And that happens through the snapshot procedure. So this is not going to help you okay so this process will not work and other thing is they are saying encrypt the redshift cluster okay see encryption the redshift cluster means the database will be encrypted the data will be encrypted audit log will not be encrypted okay then you they are saying that use redshift spectrum to query that is fine but your the audit log you have not addressed the problem no the audit log is not encrypted so this is wrong okay now See option C. Option C and D are similar on the first part. See, they are saying that we will use default encryption. We will use in default encryption, but is perfectly fine. Where on S3 bucket, on S3 bucket, which is perfectly fine. Using what? AES 256, AES 256, perfect. Where the problem happens is they are going to copy the data into Redshift cluster. And here they are going to use Redshift spectrum. Which is better? I'll take a pause. You tell me. You think. Which is better? See, Redshift Spectrum is better. Why? 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 Because you do not need to load the data and kill time there. If you want to load the data in Redshift Cluster, you will need some sort of processing or sort of ETL programs and etc. This is not required. Using Redshift Spectrum, you can directly hit the data uh, files and read it or that is possible to query. Okay. So, D should be the answer. Now, the problem here is, why not A? See, the difference between A and D is that uh, first thing, here they are using KMS and here they are using AES. I think AES will work. AES is more cost effective than KMS. Okay, that is point number one. Again, I am telling you point number one, AES is more cost effective than KMS. Okay, that is one. Second is A is also going to copy the data in Redshift cluster. That is going to take time, compute resources and it is not cost effective. The cost effective is keep the data where it is and use Redshift spectrum. What is Redshift Spectrum? See, you can have files in S3 bucket and using Redshift Spectrum, you can directly read the files, join it with other Redshift tables and etc. You don't have to plan for an ETL process. You don't have to plan for the ETL process. That is the advantage of Redshift Spectrum. So now we have established that option D is the right answer. We will lock this and move forward. Question number four, question number four. 
Please pause this, read it carefully. There are multiple lines. You have to understand the story. See, an organization, no, they have huge amount of data, 100 terabytes of log data, log data, not the actual data. Log data is different. Log data is means what is happening in the database, who logged in, what activity they did, did they fire, insert, update, delete, and so on. The files are saved in S3 bucket as raw text. And each item is identified by the key of type year, month, and day. Now, each item is identified by a key. This key uh, of the type year, month, and date. This is this is a key type. And then Amazon Athena, in Amazon Athena, there is a table that links to S3. Okay. Several times, every hour, one, one time queries are conducted against the set of tables columns. The way the queries are fired, they have to you know maneuver that to lower the cost management wants a solution that requires less upkeep means less less maintenance upkeep means maintenance so what action should we take that we have to choose three options let's go one by one see a says to convert the log files into avro files usually parquet files are a lot better than avro files because parquet files are uh, it can be stored in the less i mean it occupies less space and it is columnar in nature the moment uh, you use parquet files, reading from parquet files is a lot more faster. So if you are having logs and you know logs will have a lot of data. If you are trying to store so much of logs, that means you should use a format which is uh, which takes less space. So Avro is not the right option. Parquet takes less space. That is one. Second, if you want to read from the parquet files, it is pretty fast because parquet stores the data in columnar fashion. I repeat, Parquet stores the data in a columnar fashion. Just like Redshift is a columnar database, it is not a row level standard RDBMS database. Similarly, Parquet files is not like CSV where it stores at a row level. This is a columnar style of storage in Parquet files. Okay, so that's why A is wrong and C is correct. So I will say A here is wrong and C is correct. At least from the file format perspective, we are dead clear on this. Point one. Now we have to choose two more answers. See, if you want to reduce the scan cost, scan cost, scan cost in S3, you have to partition the data. Okay. So how to partition? You will add a prefix and that way to the S3 objects to partition the data. So this is correct because partitioning, you know, you add a prefix so that if there are 10 partitions and they, you fire a query, it will directly go to the right partition. Maybe partition three is the right partition. It will go there. It will scan the data there and it will give you the results it will not go to partition 1 partition 2 partition 3 up to partition 10 that is not cost effective but this is cost effective where it will directly go to the partition which has the data required for the query that's why b is correct now see what is the difference between b b and d what is the difference the difference is here this is the form it is using and here there is no date equal to this so the right option is b and c is not the right option this is not the way to put the uh, format forms okay e says you drop and recreate the table with partition by clause run the alter add partition statement okay why why to drop and recreate the table your partition can be applied on the table which is already created also okay uh is it correct no it's not correct okay so you have to drop and recreate the table that is correct okay so e and f both are saying the same things in the first piece where they are saying drop and recreate the tables with partition uh, by clause, which is perfect. Okay. Now the next thing is here it is saying alter the table to add the partition. So then why did you drop it? If you could have altered it, why did you drop it? No, that is wrong. You have to run the MSCK repair table statement. What does it do? See, it will update the metadata in the catalog. Okay. This command scans the file system such as S3 for Hive compatible partitions that were added. Okay. So this is the purpose of MSCK. See, MSCK we use when you are talking about Athena. Thumb rule, thumb rule, thumb rule. Use MSCK when we are talking about Athena. Okay. So this is the right answer. These three are the right answers. Okay. Let's look at the last question for this video. So you can pause this, understand the story and come back. See, this, this question is about a health app. So you must have seen various health apps. This is one example of Apple health app. You must have seen various health apps. Okay. So it, that this question is related to health app health application so it, the app is tracking the data the consumers are using the mobile applications and to uh, and the monitoring is happening amount of steps is calculated every day and etc organization consumes and analyze live data in near real time okay so when you are walking you you see you walk for 45 minutes and after some time it 
near real time, not immediately, but near real time, maybe after five minutes or ten minutes, it tells you, okay, you walked for this many distance, this was the elevation, and uh, uh, this this is the hours or minute it took for you to complete this distance. Okay, the process data must be retained and be accessible for the period of one year because obviously uh, they try to maintain it. Uh, why do you keep it for one year? Because there must be some other research happening on that data. They will have one year to complete the research and then dismantle the data. Okay which method satisfies the least amount of operational overhead here it is not about cost alone it is not about cost alone it is about low maintenance lower the maintenance see the first option is saying use amazon cognito boss what is cognito used for this is used for sign in sign up access control okay it is not used to write the data from the application to dynamo db this is crap this is wrong because cognito is used for simple and secure user sign up sign in and access control so B, what is B telling is, uh, it is a crime, what you are telling is ingest the data in DynamoDB first, okay, by using API gateway and using DynamoDB proxy. I don't know what is proxy, but they are saying, then use step functions to create a transient EMR cluster, not you are also spawning EMR cluster, okay, and then process the data from DynamoDB. Uh, so basically what they are saying is, they will put the data in DynamoDB and they will then put EMR cluster, they will pull the data from DynamoDB and EMR cluster will process the data and output the process data into Redshift and then we will put it to Redshift. So they are using Mercedes-Benz, BMW and Audi. Why? Hey, why did I say that? Hey, why did I say that Redshift is the Mercedes-Benz? EMR cluster is like BMW. These are all expensive services. You will go bankrupt if you are not auditing your usage of these services. Okay. The question is asking least amount of operational overhead. Okay, you see this least amount of operational overhead. Will your operational overhead be least here? No. Now you have to operate and maintain DynamoDB. You have to operate and maintain step functions. You have to operate and maintain EMR cluster. And you have to operate and maintain Redshift. Okay, you are making your life miserable and hell if you use this kind of solution. So this is totally wrong. Now, see, see. It looks some sane person has written this solution. If you are talking about real time, near real time, think about Kinesis data streams. Okay, then Kinesis data analytics on the stream. You can perform data analytics directly on on that. Okay, you don't have to store it in a database. And once you get the output, store the output in S3. Okay, and then you can use Athena to run calculations. Use S3 lifecycle rules to transition objects to Glacier after one year because you have to address this solution also, right? You have to retain it for one year so retention in one year in s3 would be very costly so what you will do you will take it to glacier glacier is dirt cheap you keep it there okay so this solution is correct let's look at d also so what it is saying is you write the data from the application into s3 bucket directly first and using uh, fire rules, then use athena to run the analytics on s3 and use lifecycle so what is the difference between c and c and d c and d c is giving you more clarity C is C. Uh, C is also giving you data analytics on the stream data and then output is put to S3. So what happens is less processing. Now here what you are doing is you are directly putting to S3. You are not massaging or doing anything with the data. You are directly putting to S3 and then uh, you are using Athena for analytics. But uh, you know your, your data is not in a good condition. You should use data analytics on the stream also that will help you uh, massage the data to some extent okay so this is c is my answer please hit the subscribe and the like button this brings us to the end of this part we looked at questions linked with these topics see you in the next part